Hello again! Welcome back to the Automating Everything series. Last time we uh, made this little dripstone system here just to get pointed dripstone going for the next project, and it's been producing it. It's very slow, turns out. Uh, making dripstone is quite a slow process, but I actually did have to modify it a bit. I, I did get dripstone up there, but the bottom has stayed the same. But some generate like that, so I've had to add a second layer of drills so that it can mine both the top and bottom. But it has been slowly making it here. It's a very gradual farm, it's not meant to be like highly industrial because uh, I don't exactly need a ton of pointed dripstone. In addition, we uh, did the chicken farm over here and it's been working very well for me. Uh, I, I want to figure out a way to maybe make an actual food from this. Oh, it's punching a chicken as we speak. But for now, it'll be fine. I did figure out how to stop chickens from leaking from this. I just kind of surrounded it in brick. So it's kind of more constrained back here, but it'll be fine. Now, last time I alluded to the fact that I wanted to automate lava. And I will do that today. That That is part of the plan, using this pointed dripstone. But the first thing I would like to make is a... You know, everyone calls it a power station, essentially, using, uh, creates steam engines. Because if I go back in here, to make this whole system, along with the, the, the rail system behind it here, I've had to use a lot of water wheels. This is not a very sustainable method. Not necessarily because of the materials, but more so just because of the space it requires. So I would like to set up some steam engines, as it's something I've never done before, and I think it'd be useful. And we can make use of this charcoal we're generating over here. I've already begun planning this out just a little bit, but what we'll have is a fan at the top of these chutes, so then it'll be pulled up from the barrel, or at least I hope so. And then we can then belt that across the way, this way, to where our building will be, which is probably going to be right around here. So yeah, I think I'll go ahead and make some sort of foundation or something. I'm thinking I might like have a retaining wall right here, essentially. So then I can just maintain this like lo higher level. I don't know, I'll have to work with it. Uh, as it is with all these building processes, it takes uh, quite a bit. But yeah. All right, so it took me a bit of time because I've never actually worked with steam engines in Create before, but I, I finally done it. I got I got a thing here working. They are both level nine with all, all nine engines going, so it's giving me quite a bit of stress capacity now. So it shouldn't be a problem anytime soon. I'm considering adding more, but if I do, then it'll consume more charcoal which could be a problem and it also would require more water uh, over here i have three pumps out of this little lake i just made i don't really call it a lake more like a pond the uh, three pumps up here powered by these water wheels alone so then it's kind of isolated from the system that gets pumped into this buffer and then four pumps up there pump it to these two boilers which have mechanical arms feeding charcoal into either one, which comes through along this line and through to here. And yeah, that's basically it. It's honestly not too complicated now that I know how it works and got it all set up. In the future, we'll probably want to consider using uh, blaze cakes because if I go ahead and find them here, blaze cakes uh, basically increase their heat a lot more. You see that third stat there, the heat. Uh, they will give it a lot more heat, meaning it can generate a lot more stress units. So in the future, it'd be good if we can automate blaze cakes, we can get them in there. But for now, charcoal will be fine since we have it automated down here. And this is pretty much, as you can kind of see here, it had a backup before some got used up there, but it can keep up with it pretty well, so that's good at least. I was a little worried that this might not be enough and I'd have to add extra production, but no, it's fine. You may also notice I added this retaining wall I mentioned. Um, fairly simple, I'm not, I didn't really think too hard on it. It's, it, it feels a bit wrong probably because I haven't like messed with the terrain here, so it's kind of just sitting there plopped into the world. 
Uh, once I mess with it more, maybe I put some grass in front of it or a path along here. I'm not entirely sure. It, it should look a lot better. Now, I, I do want to build a building for this, but I think for right now, I'm gonna do something else in the form of lava automation, actually. Uh, what we're gonna do, I'm thinking of building like right here, sort of a longer building, or maybe up there. I, I've still not quite decided, but something like that should work. So yeah, that's what I'm gonna go ahead and start working on next. All right, with the steam uh, engines all set up in the background there, I went ahead and expanded our little area here to make a new building. And I went with this uh, red brick design with these kind of, these different tough blocks from chips and like a bunch of different brick blocks. It looks pretty nice, well textured from reasonable distance. Uh, um, of course, I'm going to add more detail to this, though, because it's very plain as it is, and because it's such a big one-colored wall, pretty much, it doesn't look very good. Whereas these other buildings have, like, you know, they have some amount of changes, enough to make it more bearable. On the inside here, I've laid out a simple, basically, well, layout to how the actual lava will work. We'll have just two layers. I, I'm still like debating on if I want to like move this around, maybe go underground with it, because if we peek our head under here, it's just empty space. I just terraformed over it down here. So if we could use that, that would be pretty useful. And it would also give us extra production, kind of like how I made the wheat farm below ground before. So yeah. Uh, over here is where I was thinking we keep the lava tanks, so we have just like a tank here and a tank here, like so, and then we just stack them up, uh, and I'm gonna need a lot more fluid tanks for this, but yeah. So then the lava will just get pumped across from the two layers, maybe the layers come out to like here-ish or so, at which point you know, that's it. Maybe we have some, like, what do you call it, catwalks, basically, to go to the different layers. That sort of thing is what I'm thinking. We might need extra lava storage, too. I was originally thinking of having a tank, like, right out here, but now that I've adjusted this and added a doorway here, I'm kind of thinking against that. Unless I put something, like, here. I don't know. I'm still thinking on it. But yeah, that's, that's the uh, plan for this now. All right, so I've now filled in a good amount of the building. It's not complete yet, but I've at least put in the basis of the mechanism. I don't think you can call it that. It's really just a bunch of cauldrons with dripstone pointed into them and then lava sources on top of them. And then there's gonna be two layers of this. Now, current, normally it'll go into these fluid containers directly from there. For right now, I have it just piping directly down so I can get the lava source blocks it generates so I can continue to put those on the new layers because from what I understand, it needs a lava source block in order to generate lava. So yeah, that's what I've done for now. So yeah, I've just got to finish up this second layer here and we'll be producing quite a bit of lava because this is just such a large amount of cauldrons and dripstone to be randomly ticking, basically. It works on a similar kind of idea to that one where it's just relying on random ticks, but there's so many that it won't matter. In fact, I'm actually running out of dripstone and I'm gonna have to check the farm again and see if it's gotten any more. All right, so there was a um, like two, three month uh, gap between this and the last clip uh, because the semester was killing me, but now I'm back again uh, as I felt more motivated to play it again. And uh, I honestly cannot remember what I last talked about. So I'm just gonna show off this. I've got this going. Uh, with all the lava and all that, I've got like display boards that can display how much is in each tank. 
they both uh, expand downward below here just to make them quite large. Basically as big as possible. Then we have a secondary one here, because right here I want to make the... Um, I want to make obsidian, for one. Uh, I also want to make the train uh, plates. I think that's what they're called. Uh, train casing, sturdy sheets, which requires lava and powdered obsidian, which is just crushing obsidian. So I'm thinking I should be able to fit obsidian and also making sturdy plates in this little side building here. I kept the same sort of style, just made it smaller. And I think it looks pretty nice. So yeah, I'm gonna start working on getting this all set up with like some obsidian generation here, which should be simple. And then making sturdy sheets along here and probably storing obsidian over here as, as well as sturdy sheets. So this side, uh, and that'll be good. All right, I have successfully automated everything here. Our lava goes through this pipe is pumped in through there, gets pumped there where the this obsidian is mined, and there's a water source above that is blocked by a block, so that way it generates obsidian and not cobblestone. Uh, it's also pumped over here for making the, the plates things. Obsidian, when it's mined, goes along this top belt and will fall into these crushing wheels. It also allowed it to go to the crate or drawer over here just in case there's any overflow or anything like that and then the obsidian has a chance of sticking around as you see here so back here it just flows into both and it's sorted out so it goes in the correct crate so that way we're basically getting obsidian nearly every sturdy sheet and yeah that's basically it it's really simple just some crushing wheels a bunch of cog wheels to like this, these don't need to be at super high stresses, so I gear them down a little bit and some gear down for the belts as well. But yeah, it's pretty simple. So that's that's another two things. Uh, the street sheets should be especially useful for when we get more into trains. Alright, so with the uh, obsidian all done, there's still, I think, like five to ten minutes left worth of time in this episode since there's like 20 minutes per episode give or take uh last i checked the editing or whatever uh, so we've got to set up one or two more things we'll, we'll see how we how much we can do we've been getting a lot done lately. so let's see uh over here i did some updates i just like added a little like obsidian repository and then added a path that just ends here because uh i don't know how to blend these two i'll figure it out at some point um but there's just i i finally got a proper path in here so it looks a lot nicer and there's lanterns everywhere and i tried to eliminate any and all torch spam i could to replace it with lanterns Ooh, that shouldn't be doing that um there's still of course some here because this needs a path next to it, but yeah. I, I'm still unsure what I want to do with this aesthetically, because um, that doesn't look good. And over here, I think this might actually just be fine to be open, but I'm not entirely sure still. Uh, so we'll see. But the next thing that I would like to start automating is um, like gravel, because I use a lot of gravel um cobblestone those sort of stones especially andesite because with all the create stuff i'm making i'm gonna need more and more andesite the longer i go so that's the main goal next is to automate andesite cobblestone gravel sand maybe even clay Oh, and one more thing you might have noticed in the distance is uh, this. I, I went ahead and just built a little shelter for our uh, what are these steam engines here. Uh, and it, it looks alright, it's nothing crazy. It's just uh, different versions of netherrack and then some diorite corners with a um, cobbled deep slate roof. Not, that does the trick. It's I, I couldn't I, I didn't have the best of ideas, but I'm I'm trying my hardest. Uh, I wanted to go with something similar to that, but like more boxy. So I kind of did the trick there. Anyway, 
Next, let's get some some of those stuff going. Uh, the actual aesthetic, I think, might still be open, but I'm going to do it over in this little kind of valley thing here. It's like the perfect spot. Um, I could have like a... a uh, I don't know if you've seen these before, but there's like places where they mine like limestone and that sort of thing. They have basically a huge stockpile of it that's basically just a massive dune of it if you will so maybe we could have those here um kind of storing gravel sand that sort of thing all here uh, as an aesthetic choice <laughs> stumbling over my words so yeah i'm gonna do some work on that and i'll be back okay so it's been like approximately um, uh, nine, ten months since I've really properly played here. Um, sorry, life gets busy, and also motivation waxes and wanes. But I'm, I'm, I'm back to being motivated again. I have done a bunch of work on actually updating all the mods in the pack and adding a few, and so on and so forth, because. It was kind of very messy, uh, so hopefully all should be well now. I was having some difficulties with some compatibilities and so on and so forth, but it should be all good. So, anyway, as was mentioned previously, I wanted to make a sort of, uh, you know, like stone storage area, kind of like they have at quarries. And I've done half of one here. As you can see, we've got cobblestone here and gravel here. Pretty simple process, I hardly need to even show it. It's simply cobblestone generator here that makes cobblestone that gets pumped into here, and there you go. Over here, same process, just the, the cobblestone, rather, gets uh, crushed down into gravel. I'm not entirely sure what to put here, probably sand. Uh, the main issue currently is that this is currently running into my base, um, if you can call it that. I've, I've hardly mentioned my air quotes base, I think, but I kind of just live in the side of this hill, um, and have been for a while, and it's not, it's not, uh, great. It's not gonna work if we're gonna be running into it like this. And I need that space to actually, you know, fit this build here. So, f for now, I'm gonna have to probably put this whole thing aside. And I'll come back to it when I've set out a proper -er base, so to speak. Part of me doesn't... I don't know. Um, having to build a base is difficult. I can't remember what I planned on doing with this area. Plans are long gone by now, it's been so long. But... I need to figure out something. So, for now, I have most of this current rest episode already recorded. This is pretty much the last of what was needed. So, this is basically my way of saying it might be back as a series. It, I wouldn't say it's going to be nearly as often episodes as they used to be, but I'll probably be more back to it. So with that, I will conclude uh, this episode. I'm not entirely sure how much was automated. The count will come later. Um, I think this whole thing was this episode. Could not tell you, honestly. But yeah. Anyway, point is, probably going to be coming back. If not as often, but still will be occasionally there. So yeah. Um, See you next time, hopefully. Hopefully grad school doesn't kill me. <laughs>